Hot off an incredible opening night for the NFL. We are back. We are breaking down the rest of the matchups, the news, some unfortunate news that we have to cover, and we debut a brand new segment, a fantasy face-off DFS special. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, enjoy the show. This is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh with pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions. It's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. I know I have, but don't feel ashamed. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness, and there are two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss, and Keeps offers both of them. They have a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations, medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home, and treatments start at just $10 a month for the generic versions. They have more five-star reviews than any of its competitors, and prevention is the key. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash footballers to get your first month free. Keeps. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Friday, September 10th. <clears throat> that was a game. <laughs> yes, it was. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. I'm still glowing. Jason Moore, Mike Wright. So many points. Andy Holloway. So much fun. Mm. I, I'm not sure the NFL could have asked for something better than what they got last night. That mm. was... Storylines a plenty, a uh, competitive game, an exciting game. Uh, had it all, man. Like, if your if your name wasn't Ronald Jones, you had a great night, right? <laughs> Greg Zerline had a great night. And he finally he finally hit it. What well, fantasy purposes? This is what I'm saying. This game had it all of just real life excitement coming down to the wire. Can Tom Brady actually do it again? Which he, I mean, he he did. Fantasy points are plenty, and yet full-on fantasy tilts already from people who drafted Mike Evans and Zeke. I, I, I'm sorry if, if you're dealing with that on your roster, but just for for fantasy football to be back and have every single facet of the game encapsulated in a primetime island game for everyone to watch, oh, it, that was, was, it, it was so much fun. How do does Tom Brady not have a top five season with those weapons? Injury, age. Maybe he, uh, maybe he dies of old age. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. I was trying to use my imagination last night to visualize what it would be like to watch Tom Brady um, regress on the field, and I could. My imagination couldn't do it. Like I couldn't see the big play, you know, where the arm dies off. Like I, it's going to be hard. One of the things maybe he that, just walks away on top at some point. Yeah, one of the or things like week that, eight. <laughs> he's like, I don't have it anymore. I'm out of here. I just can't see. I can't see him not producing to just an an incredible I mean, degree. The the honest to, to answer that question would be that he is old, and this is week one. He's fresh. He's ready to go. If somehow. Arm, he got better last year over the second. Arm, half. I'm just. I'm just. He was, but he wasn't as old as he was. Now, sure. I I'm just trying to figure it out. Terrible argument, Mike. Arm fatigue, like and he's not going to play the Cowboys every week. Yeah, that that's, is that's, also true. That's a big part of it. Oh, but, Cowboys, <laughs> don't don't ever change. Oh, seriously, <laughs> don't ever change. I absolutely love the fact that we can count on you to need to throw a lot of points on the on the yes. board. It's fantastic. Well, and they're not it, 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 inversely. They're not going to play Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski every week either. Sure. They're not going to play the Super Bowl champions on the road, uh, and you know. So it was. It, Tampa couldn't stop anybody either. I mean, Tampa's secondary got beat up, 
got picked apart. The Cowboys threw the ball constantly. I mean, you needed to keep Zeke in to to block against this pass rush. He did a great job doing that. I am fully on board with what Jason said last week, which is go get Zeke from skittish owners. Yes, he's still play he was the guy. I get it. Tony Pollard uh was used more than you had hoped if you drafted Zeke, but it really wasn't that much. It, it wasn't, especially it, in the second half. It felt like a lot because when because Pollard got touches, but Zeke was still in for the vast majority Zeke of the game. Zeke was in for 73% of the snaps. He ran 44 routes. He was super involved, except they weren't running the ball, and the passes didn't they go his way. And it was smart to not run the ball yeah. because their defensive line was better than their offensive line, especially missing their all-pro left guard. So we saw this coming. We talked about this before the game. If you're the Zeke owner, just calm down, take your lumps, do not trade him, and if you're not, Go make a trade offer for Zeke. I would. Um, I think he's going to have a, a great season. He didn't look bad to me. No. To start the game, his runs looked great. He looked svelte and ready to go. You would you would have hoped that he could have handled the uh, – yes, Blake Jarwin missed the block, but – the, the, the touchdown opportunity. Yeah, the touchdown opportunity, but but Zeke should have – made that uh, the defender miss. All right, we do have a jam-packed show. We have nine matchups to get into, some news, big-time news to talk about. Also, Antonio Brown is great. I have to... Also, Amari Cooper is great. <laughs> pivot my start of the week at running back momentarily. Oh, no, no, but, Andy, we're, we're, we're riding know, high right now. I know. Bringing everybody down. I can bring us back up. Here we go. Okay. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Why not celebrate 9,552 targets with a free jersey? So this week, like every week, we have a Friday giveaway for our supporters at jointhefoot.com. This week's item from pristineauction.com is an Amari Cooper signed jersey. Ooh. And it goes to Jace L. Jace L. Oh, that's, that's E L L. Is that Superman's brother? Oh, like Cal L? That's yeah. a Cal L joke. I like um, it. Thank you. Pristineauction.com. Use code Ballers. Get a ten dollar credit. Congratulations, Jace, on your victory. We'll have another giveaway next week. We just got into the Thursday night recap. Antonio Brown was great. Um, I mean, I don't want it to be lost that Godwin had nine receptions for yes. 105 yards. He also could have had a tenth. That was a 50 yard bomb that hit him in the hands. Uh, also could have had another touchdown, yes. but he fumbled it into the end zone. So Godwin got off to a great start. Gronkowski was outstanding. Gronk, Gronk, Gronk. Yeah, uh, Mike was very happy because oh, yes, I was. He uh, he started him in our league of record from the waiver wire to my starting lineup. Thirteen receptions for Amari Cooper on sixteen targets. Ceedee Lamb had fifteen targets. Very up and down performance from Lamb with some drops, but you saw the yak explosiveness. From C.D. Lamb, he is going to have five mind-bending long touchdowns this year. Just get ready for it. He him. had a hundred yards and a touchdown, and he sucked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he could have. He didn't. Suck. No, he didn't suck. But my point is, he had three plays that he. I mean, he he made he mistakes. He should have walked away with a hundred and sixty yards and maybe two and touchdowns. Like the, the bigger news for I mean the the benefactors were Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb having the incredible target share. Michael Gallup left this game with an ankle injury. And, I mean, to that point, it seemed like when they were in too wide, it was still going to be Cooper and, and Gallup. But if 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 Gallup misses time, CeeDee Lamb's an even better option. And might cover your ears, but Blake Charwin and Dalton Schultz are going to uh, share the work. Yeah, in no, I, I know. Room. Yeah, it was, it was unfortunate, but Jarwin is nothing more than a uh, just desperation play at this point. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, beep. Beep. One more. Beep. beep. The Gus Bus himself. Dang it, man. Torn ACL done for the season, placed on IR. The Ravens have now lost J.K. Dobbins, Justice Hill, and Gus Edwards. Um, but don't worry. <laughs> they now have four 1,000-yard rushers. 
they signed Latavius Murray, uh, Devonta Freeman, uh, Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell. Bell, and of course they have the rookie Tyson Williams. Yep. So why? How is he a thousand yard rusher? He is not. But wait, uh, isn't there a fourth? Or am I? Uh, I think I miscounted. W- wait for Todd Gurley. Just give me a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> um and then and then we'll revisit that stat. This is uh this is a mess. Uh it, it's it's unfortunate for Gus the person had his opportunity yes. and for it to happen on in practice like right before the season begins shocking. I mean Mike's expression in the office was <gasps> Yeah. When he saw the tweet come a- across, they also lost Marcus Peters immediately after on the next play. Terrible luck for the Ravens. Jason asked me yesterday on the footcast um, our extra episode for for Patreon. You said, "Am I sticking with the Ravens as my Super Bowl pick?" It's hard to do that. I mean, it was hard. They were my pick before Dobbins got hurt. Now you lose your entire running back room and Marcus Peters. Um, I don't think I earned bonus points by sticking with them through injuries. So I, I guess I would pivot to the Chiefs at this point out of the AFC and be extremely boring with that selection. But Tyson Williams. Impressive preseason, but the team went out and signed Freeman, Bell, and Latavius Murray. Murray's the most – I mean, he had his best yards per carry last year. He's a veteran. He can catch the football. He can pass protre- protect. To me, he's the better back to to, to have on my roster. Yeah, I, I, I think long-term he very well could be the number one here. This weekend, I would still expect it to be Tyson Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that everyone is basically showing up right before uh, you know the game time, I don't know that they're going to throw them right into the lead dog role. And what that means to me is that Tyson has at least the opportunity to prove it. He can go out this week and say, if he is the lead dog, and say, look, I can handle this, I can do this, in which case he would solidify that role. But if he goes out, and is mediocre, then I think it would be Latavius Murray as as the one to have the rest of the I would be picking both of them up. And I would I agree I'll probably prioritize Latavius Murray for for the long haul. If you need a spot start this week, Tyson Williams in this matchup, I I'm with Jason. I think he's still gonna be a really solid running back to play against the Raiders. The matchup is fantastic. He's the guy this week, I believe. But, but oh Mike, yes, voice of public opinion. Le'Veon Bell's a fantasy superstar. Levy, look, the do we have a, an official report yet? Because Latavius Murray was put onto the fifty-three. Devontae Freeman is still on the practice squad. It, where? It, what is the status of Le'Veon Bell? I think he might still be on the practice squad. The only thing I have to go on right now is what John Harbaugh said, which is that they expect him to be active for this weekend. That was before they signed Latavius Murray, Correct. though. It was. So, it was. Uh, honestly, and like for... But they knew Latavius was out there when they signed Lev Bell. But they didn't... Right? I mean, that was... But you didn't know for sure that you were going to get Latavius Murray. Someone else may have offered him more money. You had to move forward with the guys that you have and, and the, the guys that you can actually add right now. So what kind of fab would you spend on Latavius or Tyson? I, this, is, this is week one. Sure. Uh, because it is murky, I mean, you're talking 15 plus percent. I would go on Latavius Murray, uh, probably 10, 10 to the, the 10 to what 20 the range contract? for Williams. How much money? It was a veteran minimum contract, I believe. Yeah. It's, so he passed up on the taking a discount in New Orleans to sign veterans minimum for this year. Yeah. So and, so and it seemed like a great financial move. Honestly, for but I do believe that if it ends up being Latavius Murray takes over the starting position, I still believe that Tyson will be the backup. Like following the the transactions, yes, Devontae Freeman was added, but they brought both Le'Veon Bell and Freeman in to work out. They picked Le'Veon Bell, and then they had another injury, so they went, oh, "Okay, fine, Freeman, we'll put you on the practice squad." And those guys just. I don't think that they have the juice left. And you can look back, like this this Ravens team, year after year, has found value at the running back position. Go, You guys remember Justin Forsett? Oh, who, yes. Who had that sensational year, and you didn't know it was going to be him because that was the year, that was the Ray Rice year. Like, Ray Rice was slotted to be the starter. All of a sudden, he's gone uh, for his off-the-field bull crap, and they're like, what do we do? And Justin Forsett is gone. Great. Oh, he don't make the law. He just enforce it. So <laughs> I'm saying I'm I'm putting the, I'll put the chips on Latavius Murray. I won't disagree with that. But 
Tyson still has a chance to me, uh, I far agree. more than no, the agree. other two. And this weekend, vets. I'm fine if you want to flex Tyson. I mean, he's got he's going to get play this weekend. After that, it's kind. I we'll mean, it's see. a difficult yeah. Fab situation. I think Tyson will probably be part of a backfield committee. That's what before two signings yesterday. That's what I tweeted was like, sure. hey, they're gonna they're gonna have to share the load because you can't for. They're probably planning on three more injuries. I mean, at this point, you just expect your running backs to go down. Yes. Uh, I will pivot from Gus Edwards. I think he's a terrible start this week. I, he's not my start of the weekend. Uh, I do love your pivot pick, though. James Robinson against Houston. This pick is all the more a knife twist to yours truly oh. <laughs> because I made the decision a week before the season to trade James Robinson to get Gus Edwards in our dynasty league that I am defending – my title with, I thought Edwards had a better season ahead of him than James Robinson does. So I'm going to pivot right to James. Can I pivot the trade back as well, Brooks? Unfortunately. Al? That, no? That is not allowed. I don't think so. But uh, um, <laughs> I didn't like the trade for you, and I was proven right. So uh, yeah, you, you did. A, you're such you a genius. Uh, and you, your trade for trading me Zeke, proven right again. James Robinson at Houston. So we're going to talk about that game shortly. Josh Jacobs back in a limited capacity on Thursday. Uh, oh, it was an injury. It was a toe injury for Josh Jacobs, so keep your eyes on it. Yes. Uh, but being back on the practice field is good. Austin Eckler still sidelined. Uh, there is a there's an optimism out of Los Angeles that Eckler will be ready for the opener. There is a pessimism in my mind of yeah. his workload. And it, not only a pessimism for the workload, it's just, it's a late hamstring injury. And he's missed multiple practices. Now, we might get the a Friday. A late string? Yes, a late string, as they say in the, the kids. Yeah, it's not say. even a camp string. Yeah, camp, no. Camp was over. Now it's a week one string. Uh, but he's missing practice. And, look, Justin Jackson needs to be stashed at the back of your bench because Austin Eckler, sure, they're optimistic he could play. He could go play. You got a, you got a probable chance that Austin Eckler goes out and tweaks his hamstring and creates a larger problem, and all of a sudden Justin Jackson is the hot waiver pickup of the week. So heading in, uh, you need to stash Justin Jackson. A lot cheaper Jackson. now. Yes. Nelson Aguilar didn't practice, so Jacoby Myers is looking looking pretty nice. interesting in week one. Traquan Smith didn't practice. This is uh, – Goodness gracious. <clears throat> Tra Traquan Smith was an often grabbed guy with your last pick that he might be the number one target. Cut him. Move on. Right now, go to your waiver wire and grab someone else as your shot. Go grab Brian Edwards and replace Traquan. Kenny Galladay limited, Odell Beckham limited, Darnell Mooney limited. That's what we have right now. Uh, Which is whatever. A reminder, if you are a supporter over at jointhefoot.com, we post game day alerts. Mike is also live on Sunday morning. So even though this is the last episode of the podcast for the week, we're going to be out on socials with any news we get. We're going to be out with Game Day Live. Mike will be telling you the latest news, and then the Game Day Alerts over at Join the Foot will also let you know who to start and, and sit. So, Jamison Crowder, is it, this is an official. Jamison Crowder will miss week one. Yes. Because uh, he tested positive for COVID. This makes Elijah more interesting. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. You can get all the breaking news over on Sleeper as well. You just pick up the app, download the Sleeper app, subscribe to the Breaking Alerts channel. And there you go. You're you're set up. You're ready. Yes, you are. Fantasy Forecast. Hopping into the Fantasy Forecast once again. Week one matchups. Yesterday we covered Eagles, Falcons, Steelers, Bills, Vikings, Bengals, 49ers, Lions, Cardinals, Titans, Seahawks, Colts. If you want to hear one of those, just uh, click the click the episode that came up yesterday. Los Angeles, the Chargers travel. They take on the Washington football team. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Washington minus one at home. Over under is 45 points in this game. So it's, a, it's almost a heads-up matchup here between the Chargers mm -hmm. and the uh, potentially limited Austin Eckler and the Washington football team who will be likely without Curtis Samuel. Still listed as questionable but a couple of injuries on both sides, and that Jason's making a face that yeah, says that questionable is going to turn into a, an O oh, real quick. That's going to drop to a doubtful. There, there is no question <laughs> as to whether he is questionable. He is out. You don't believe in miracles? I do. I believe in miracles, just not with uh, – the miracles should have already happened. This you don't believe in groin miracles? No. Ah, 
McGroin, uh, no, C Curtis Samuel is out. Uh, act accordingly. All right, Justin Herbert on the road against the great Washington defense. How great? Well, third against opposing quarterbacks, second against opposing running backs, third against wide receivers, eighth against tight end. Top 10 in all categories last year against uh, fantasy players. So there are question marks about confidence levels on the Chargers offense side, especially if Eckler isn't unlocking a bit of that defense with his versatility. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm concerned about Justin Herbert. I am too. It, look, it's week one. You're playing the guys that you drafted. Uh, unless you have like some real intestinal fortitude, you know, I wouldn't mind pivoting to Matt Ryan against the the Philadelphia Eagles over Justin Herbert. But so it's not that Herbert is a terrible play, but the Washington defense is for real. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the week one advice is going to be. Sir, you're going to probably play most of the players you drafted higher. There's going to be some start sit decisions like there were with Antonio Brown or later round picks. We'll try to focus on those because if you drafted Herbert to be your quarterback, you're you're not going to cut him in week one. Okay, well let's get to it. If Austin Eckler plays, is he in your lineup? I let's, think. And I, let's say I, he's yeah, limited because, today. He ends up a limited Friday practice. If he's active, I'm going to play him because okay. he doesn't take. If he was strictly a two down back and going to share the work against a Washington defense like this. I mean, you're going to have to run through the air against them. They gave up yes, 16, you are. 16 fantasy points a game to the running back position total last year. But yes, I would play a first round running back that I drafted. Okay. If he was active Gibson, start him up. Yes, please. Terry McLaurin. Absolutely. Logan Thomas was Jason start of the week at tight end. They're going to need him in this matchup. And uh, the Chargers last year, at least, were 21st against opposing fantasy tight ends. Keenan Allen is is a great start, as usual. Yep. I, I would say, because you're going to start the people you drafted high, the main focus is just what to watch for in these games. I'm going to be watching Josh Palmer um, and Mike Williams, see if, if the rookie is on the field. I don't expect him to have a good game against Washington. And I'm going to watch the Jared Cook, Donald Parham tight end situation to see um, can the younger, yeah. more athletic tight end get on the field? I don't expect anything from any of them, but watch them in this game. And I'll be watching Deami Brown on the Washington sure. side. Yeah, yeah, there's a chance that Parham ends up a huge waiver wire pickup yeah. after this game. The Jets take on the Carolina Panthers. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Panthers minus four at home. Over-under is 44.5. And that puts the implied point total at 24 for the Panthers, 20 for the Jets. Hmm. The Zach Wilson debut. Not the worst matchup for that. I mean, I, I, you're on the road, but you have an opportunity against the bottom half defense at least last year. Yeah, but you're up against revenge. Oh, the Sam Darnold revenge Sam game? Sam Darnold. Unless they put a picture of Adam Gase or like a cardboard cutout of you him on the sideline. You think they're not doing that? Like, <laughs> I would. Yeah, I think that they're planting a bunch of people with Adam Gase masks in the stadium. Would, He's going to look around. Not? What if he was standing behind center and you look up? And there's about 9,000 Adam Gazes staring at you. Come on, fam. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Darnold, Zach Wilson, not really in consideration this week, but you'll be watching, Sam. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think if you're in a super flex and you drafted these guys, the matchup is not the worst. Agreed. Um, I could see this game going over the 44.5 point line if these quarterbacks surprise. And, and that's why this line is a little bit low because – so far, Darnold has sucked in his career, and we haven't seen anything from Zach Wilson. But I, I, th there is a world where both of these guys actually end up coming out and, and uh, starting well. We get to see Christian McCaffrey return from injury. We, Huzzah! Uh, we get to see how this wide receiver room with the newly extended Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore and Terrace Marshall Jr., Dan Arnold, the postman. But start-wise, uh, Moore and Anderson are in there. The rest are just watches? That is correct. I think Marshall is a find desperation like f double flex type of a player okay well okay let's ask a question let's, for a friend let's do it jason would you play jalen rager or terrace marshall i think i would play marshall what if you have jalen hurts as your quarterback i ask you for a friend <laughs> this is <laughs> I would nothing play, to do I'd with play, my I'd league play rager. Team. yeah i play rager with the limited pass catching options he could have a big play that's who is in my lineup <laughs> oh um, man hit the button breaking news <laughs> questionable my butt yeah that q didn't change to O. no it did not it changed to i r 
Oh, Sam- Curtis Samuel oh. on IR later today. Yep. I assume sense. this is the three week. This is great, great, great news. I I have what? <laughs> no, I know, I this know. Guy, this is one of those COVID, COVID is great comments. This is saving managers from landmines. Sure. This is not for, great news for Curtis Samuel. I'm not no. saying like, oh, Curtis. And it's not great news for Washington. But it is great news for fantasy football because I, I could tell you, I have Curtis Samuel on a lot of my rosters. My two most drafted players were Amari Cooper and Curtis Samuel. Can and we go with helpful news? Yes. This, this yes. is Because sure. I don't see how it's great. <laughs> well, here, Here's either. how it's great. I have been every single moment of the day thinking I need to drop Curtis Samuel. I need to drop him. I, I don't want to have this roster clog, but I drafted him a little bit higher. And so it's really been tough to make the decision. Now I can either move him to my IR or if you don't have an IR, cut him and move on, uh, which is that's I, I'm just saying when you get something that gives you the confidence to make the right transaction, that side of it is great news. It's helpful news. I'm with Andy. Let, let's go with the verbiage helpful. So uh, Deami Brown now moves from I'm watching him this weekend to if you've got a flyer, you've got the, the binoculars out and yeah, you're focused well, on him. I'm saying if you have the flyer spot, you should. He's one of the options. He's one of the undrafted Terrace Marshall gems. or Diami Brown. Marshall, yes. Um, for what it's worth, I knew that our waivers were going through as the show was going on. Oh, so if you want to know how much Fab got spent on Latavius Murray, it was thirty four dollars out of a shnikes. out of a one hundred dollar budget. Now I had bid. Now I had bid twenty. I think I put like five. <laughs> uh, he went for 34 in our league of record for what it's worth. That might help you if. Um, but I also have Tyson. So who? Okay. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that's aggressive. Yeah. I, I would imagine you would have been maybe more aggressive to kind of guarantee you have the backfield there. It was. Of course, you could get stuck with both every week. Yeah, that's that's what I the situation I wanted to avoid. I didn't want to clear my fab and then have no problems or, or have big problems. All right. Uh, the other side of this game. You have Zach Wilson. You're not playing him. Are you starting any of the the Jets running backs in this? No, one? no. This is a keep your eyes on it situation, and I I think that one of these running backs could be uh, a success in fantasy week one. But you don't know who it's going to be. You don't know if it's going to be Tevin Coleman or Ty Johnson or whether the rookie gets more involved than he was in preseason. This is just a wait and see. There. I think the only player that I'm for sure starting is Corey Davis. What about? him against somebody like Robbie Anderson would you rather play Corey Davis this week or Robbie Anderson I think I would rather play Robbie Anderson okay uh Davis is a good start he's the kind of one that you can look at and both Croft and Arnold are dart throws in DFS Tyler Croft is definitely a dart throw I mean Darnold I mean the last last year the Jets were dead last the worst team against opposing tight ends and Arnold's been targeted a lot in the preseason so um we will move on to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars. And, the and before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Fellas, you know that we've been talking about Manscaped for quite some time on this podcast. The number one grooming products for men. I love my Manscaped products. They take care of me. They help me. Look, you got to keep it clean. You got to keep it clean. You got to keep it fresh. And Manscaped is helping you do that with the Performance Package 2.0. Oh, or 4.0. They had the 2.0. They had the 3.0. Right, 3 two went to three. Three went to four. I mean, it's, I can't even keep up with the what they're doing over here. I can't wait to see what's next. Probably the 5.0, but right now it's the 4.0, and it is the best of the best. It has a 4,000K LED spotlight, helping you be accurate when you're shaving in a dimly lit area. <laughs> it, 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 it's it actually, an important accuracy yeah, zone. Yes. It actually is a really valuable piece of this tool. And the, the Performance Package 4.0 it includes the Weed Whacker. Like, this is what I'm saying. They have products for all of your grooming needs, and I have used them for years, and you're going to save some cash. Check this out. You're going to get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. Get all of that gear, the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker. Uh, they have deodorants. They have boxer briefs. They have everything you need. You can get 20% off with free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. Trust me, manscaped.com, FOOTBALLERS20. We also want to thank Headspace. Look, if mental health is part of your self-care plan this year. And it should be. You owe it to yourself to try Headspace. I've kind of made these comments over the last week here with how busy we are that I feel like I almost have amnesia about the most basic things in life because when you're overwhelmed, when you're constantly busy, 
a three minute SOS meditation, a three minute wind down at the end of the day can reduce stress, improve your sleep, boost your focus, increase your sense of well being. Look, they are backed by 25 published studies on the benefits of meditation and, and mindfulness. 600,000 five star reviews, 60 million downloads, and they make it easy for you to build a life changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you on your schedule. You deserve to feel happier. Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash footballers. That's headspace.com slash footballers for a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash footballers today. All right, Jacksonville, Houston. We do we are contractually obligated to discuss this barn burner of a matchup. And I'm actually intrigued. Look, I'm actually intrigued. To the Sir Lawrence. I'm excited to see what happens in this one. Uh I I'm a little surprised too with the like we know the defenses last year struggled tremendously. DraftKings has the over under at 45 and a half points. Jacksonville minus 3, so they're favored on the road here. I would take them in the points, but we're probably going to get a divisional. I think I think what DraftKings, the sports book, is seeing is what we actually see in this division all the time, which is you expect barn burner. You get defensive battle. You get, you get a close game. Uh, you get a 45-and-a-half point over-under, despite the fact these were two of the worst defenses last year. Well, I think it's because these were two of the worst offenses last year. And the only improvement is a rookie who could very well improve the Jaguars. But the Houston Texans, I think they would have a, a not easy time scoring on college teams. Like if it was Bama, I don't think they would they would torch them. I mean, I don't the, – the, the Texans offense is one where it's hard to find anything nice. You'll probably be surprised. This is this is setting up to surprise us like happens every year. Um Tyrod, Ingram, Lindsay, DJ. I'm not touching the running back room. Brandon Cooks. I am watching it though. Yeah, I'm the, watching Houston, it. Yeah, yeah the, you're not playing any of these players. Look over the offseason went from it surely it will be David Johnson who was last year's starter. He was solid. He's an incredible pass catching running back to him being demoted. And they brought in a whole bunch of running backs. And then it was, oh, well, surely it will be Philip Lindsay because Mark Ingram is is elderly and he looked he looked kind of washed last year for the Baltimore Ravens. And then preseason says Mark Ingram is the starter for this team. So uh, Andy's right. Don't play any of these players if you can avoid it any cost. But one of them might provide some sort of really gross, disgusting running back value. I think you can start Trevor Lawrence this week. I agree. Yeah. Um, I also like James Robinson, my, my yes. new, my new start of the week. He's in there. Houston allowed the most rushing yards in the NFL in 2020. And I think you can start Marvin Jones. I think you can start LaVisca Chenault and take your chances with both of them in the flex position. Uh, Chark is the one I have more hesitation about, but he is healthy. He's going to be back out there. And, um, there's no reason why he couldn't have a game as well. DJ Chark is what makes me n nervous to play about Marvin. the other two. Yeah. Cause Marvin Jones was the go-to for Lawrence over the course of preseason, but that's because DJ Chark was not playing. Is that is that the the truth that that uh, Lawrence has that mind meld already going with Marvin Jones, or was that DJ Chark the the number one wasn't there? It's probably a little bit of both in the sense that obviously you can't throw to Chark when he's not there, but that's Marvin true. Jones is it's Marvin accurate. Jones is the better wide receiver. Marvin Jones is better than. DJ Chark and they've been practicing and playing in preseason so I I still expect Marvin Jones to be the one I uh, but you're right that he will be impacted a little bit by Chark I think more so than LaVisca Chenault who is the gadget guy the line of scrimmage guy the the screen game manufactured touches his, his touches should still be there and on the Houston side just keep your eyes on the targets not named Brandon Cooks in this offense is it Jordan Akins is Akins. it ne Nico Collins uh they're Collins. They're, they're interesting I thought we were just saying no, names. no. I'm I'm emphasizing that Aikens is one of those waiver tight ends that I'm going to be watching. The Cleveland Browns take on the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Oh, oh baby! Chiefs minus five over under the highest uh, of the week. I think at fifty four and a half. Let's go. 
Uh, that puts it a what a thirty to twenty five game here. That's healthy. Every here's a crazy stat about how Kansas City ended the year last year. Every single game from week nine through sixteen was a one score game for Kansas City. Seven consecutive. They went seven and zero. Oh. That's not normal. Yeah, isn't that wild? Um, That's what happens when you have the greatest quarterback in the league. I mean, it, it's like last night in the game we were talking on Slack. Even when the Cowboys were just – everything was primed for them to win. I'm like, I just don't – Brady Brady will get those one-score games. Like, you, you have to finish the game. Well, yes, but, I mean, you can't say every one because they showed the stat last night, and I think it was like 8 of 18 he's done it. So it was just under 50%. So that's what I'm saying. Of 7-0 and 0 in a one-score game, that's that's regression alert If if that's how their defense keeps playing. You disagree. Who do you have? Well, I, I, I still believe that at the end of the game with Patrick Mahomes, if you if you don't finish the game with the ball, if you, you give him time, you lose. You lose. Sure. I mean, it's the same thing with Russell Wilson in one score games. It's a it's a historical thing for him over multiple years. So uh, either way, it's going to be a fun one. Mm -hmm. um, Baker has three total road wins in his career versus teams above five hundred. Oh, gross. So that is something to keep in mind. Even if you like the matchup and you think the Chiefs' defense is uh, vulnerable in week one with all the weapons that the, the Browns have, keep that in mind when you're thinking about streaming Baker Mayfield this week. I'm not comfortable with it. He's a he's an eyeball test thing yeah. this year. Agreed. I'm also not comfortable, and I think this is the biggest question in this game, is what do you do with Odell Beckham Jr.? Yeah. I know I've not been a big Odell Beckham Jr. believer, but there's also the fact that we I, I'm not 100% sure that he's just fully healthy. and he, uh, It's possible he is ready to go and that his limited nature is just part of resting a veteran who doesn't need to do this coming off of the, the ACL, um, but it's also possible that he's just not 100% yet. And he was drafted, and he's got the name recognition where a lot of people are going to be playing him. Um, and I think that there are probably other options. You know, I'd rather play Corey Davis, for instance, or or Juju. Um, yeah, but what about when you go a tier down? A tier down? Well, yeah, it's okay, like, like Marvin Jones. Would you play Marvin Jones over Odell Beckham? I think this is one of the nuances of, of fantasy. So I have to – like I had Mike Evans last night. Okay. My opponent had Tom Brady. So you that need to swing for that, the fences. So I'm swinging for the fences with Beckham because I don't want to play somebody that's just going to be potentially a middle of the road. I want to play somebody in a matchup where they're going to need to score a lot and hope that somehow, some way, you catch a couple of touchdown passes and Beckham breaks a long play. So it is cont it's contextual. That's what these decisions are. And it's, it's just one player. Uh, but he is a superstar, and as of an hour ago, Tyron Matthew was still in the COVID protocol. So he Good to know. he may be out this weekend. Yeah, they were Chiefs were number two in the NFL against fantasy wide receivers last year. So he, it was not a great matchup for them. They only gave up 25 combined points across all the wide receivers per game that they played. So Clyde Chubb, you're playing them. Yes. You drafted them to play them. Mike loves Kareem Hunt this week, the mm -hmm. start of the week, probably – because they are not favored and they're going to need some help against That's that pass rush. Exactly why. And then uh, Tyreek Hill, yeah, you're going to play him. What about Travis Kelsey? Kelsey, I'm I thinking think about so. it. I yeah. think so. It just depends on what your options are. Uh, <laughs> please play him. McCall Hardman, he's mm. a desperation play in this game. Yeah. They, Him and Robinson will both be other – secondary options for Patrick Mahomes when he can't pass it to his primaries. Yeah, I mean, obviously last year we, we got the Sammy Watkins week one game that surprised everybody, uh, so that could happen, but I feel like there are so many flyers I would rather take a shot on. Like, like a, I, would, I would rather put Henry Ruggs in my lineup than a, than a Mikko Hardman. Now, Jarvis Landry is not a name that I think was uttered more than two times during the off season on this podcast for is that because you say it three times he shows up <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd party with Jarvis heck yeah man uh bless him bless him yeah he it was not a good fantasy football season for him last year however in that stretch of games where Baker Mayfield was solid at the end of the season where it looked like the the Stefanski offense was clicking in for the passing game 
for him. Now, I know Odo Beckham was, was long gone with the ACL injury, but you had three out of four weeks where he was a top 15 option. Are we overlooking Jarvis Landry as someone who can be a wide receiver three? It's it's really, to me, it is entirely about Odell Beckham. I mean, that was at the end of the year, Odell Beckham was gone, and really you, you threw out his wide receiver 25 finish, but basically at the end of the year when he played, he only had one bad game. So I think Jarvis is okay. He's like a Tyler Boyd type in a PPR. Um, he's just not a field stretcher, not a touchdown guy. So um, – in this matchup, it's okay, but I I would rather look elsewhere. I like Hooper. Okay, I think Hooper's going to get a ton of targets in this game. Interesting. Um, much like your reasoning for Cream Hunt, Hooper's going to be very helpful against the pass rush, getting the ball out quick. Chiefs were really bad against tight ends last year, and I think Hooper is going to be more integrated into the offense this season. He he could be Hooper. My concern for Austin Hooper is that even though he's I, I, the contract and everything is there. This is another – this is a Dalton Schultz, Blake Jarwin. This is Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph. That Harrison Bryant, who is a tight end on the Cleveland Browns, he's a good player too, and I think that they could just make each other irrelevant. The Miami Dolphins traveled in New England to take on the Patriots. Boy, that's a low over-under. DraftKings has it at 40, 43 and a half. Patriots minus three at home. Uh, I do like the Patriots to win this game myself. Uh, I didn't realize that they were favored by three. I thought it would be a little bit closer. But, you know, we're going to see Mac Jones versus Tua. I mean, it's kind of yeah, that's fascinating. Fun. A couple of young quarterbacks bam on these up, franchises. Absolutely. And then, uh, but neither of them are really fantasy options this week. When you think about uh, this matchup, let's start at wide receiver for a second. With what's happening with Nelson Aguilar, with the fact Jacoby Myers was so targeted in the preseason, are you willing to play him in this game, the low over-under? Obviously, the Dolphins have a, have a good defense, but Mac Jones is kind of going to breathe maybe um, something into this passing game in New England. Yeah, I think Jacoby Myers is in play, especially if it's a PPR league. Uh, I, I hate having to give that dumb caveat all the time, but that's Jacoby Myers should be a an eight-plus target uh, type of feller every single week, and that's going to turn into, what, you know, five for – Five for fifty, five for seventy sometimes, and that's that's a decent wide receiver three or a flex play. Uh especially with Aguilar being entering the, the weekend banged up. Jason, you like Johnny Smith this week. Uh I, any any hesitation with Henry being active and we finally get to see them together? Well, the, the, it it was um, – obviously, it's better for John U. Smith fantasy-wise to have Hunter Henry out of the way. But when I was talking to some people out of the Boston area um, that are really plugged in on the team, uh, they they believe the offense is going to run through John U., which was surprising to me. Um, with Nelson Aguilar out, uh, I do think John U. is going to be utilized a lot. I think he is a fine weekly play if you are struggling and you, you don't – you know, you waited on tight end and you want to play the matchups – um, I, I think you could do okay with Johnu in this game. But to be honest, I look at this matchup and I am really not wanting to start pass catchers from either side. The low over and under, the two great defenses, the two unproven quarterbacks. I think this is going to be a, you know, a, a Damian Harris. Sure, I'll plug him in. Miles Gaskin. Sure, I'll plug him in. Um, I don't know that I want any pass catcher. The ceiling um, feels Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like what Mike said. He could get, you know, six for 70. That, that, take that, that every yeah, day of the week. Sure. That's not bad. He didn't goose you. He helped you a little bit. But I just feel like, I feel like that's, you know, too close six to the ceiling. Six for 70 is not good enough too for close Jason for, Moore. Too close to the ceiling is what I'm saying where I don't, I don't know that he has. What you if know, it's six for 70 and a touchdown? Well, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> now you have my interest. All right, what about Gesicki? Yeah, I Patriots okay. defense is great, and they're yeah. going to be at home with something to prove. Yeah. I am playing Mike Gesicki back, only because I could not pick up Rob Gronkowski. I need, oh, to, yeah, that's too bad for you. I'm not happy about it. Gronk, 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 Gronk. <laughs> That was that that's was like a me. mocking Gronk too. <laughs> gronk, 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 <laughs> Gronk, Gronk. That was that was a. Uh, me and my older kids just all night long running <laughs> running around the room. Grunk, 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 grunk. Green Bay, the Packers taking on the New Orleans Saints. 
in New Orleans. Yes. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Packers minus three and a half on the road. That is not something you would have ever seen in recent history. Over under is 49 and a half. But yeah, the Saints are three and a half point home underdogs in this one. Yeah, and I'm on the backer side of this I am game. Too. Uh Jameis gets to uh make his debut as the new Orleans starter. Not the best situation. Packers were fourth against fantasy quarterbacks last year, just sixteen point eight points per game given up. Sixth against fantasy wide receivers, third against fantasy tight ends. Okay, let me just broadly ask the question. Okay. Would you play a single soul on the Saints outside of Alvin Kamara? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, Peter, there's the priest of the hotness, Jason. the Marquez Callaway, okay, okay, the preseason me... hero is going to be going up against Jair, Al Jair Alexander, um, who Jacoby is Jacoby Myers and Marquez Callaway. Jacoby Myers for sure. Okay. Okay. That's that's how I feel. I I think Alvin Kamara is going to have a great game. I am certainly keeping my eyes on Tony Tony Brooks James Jones Jr. Um, that was his accurate name. Right. Tony. Now, you dropped, ironically, in yes. our league of record. You, I don't know if you want this discussed. No, but let's, let's bring it up. Yesterday, you dropped September 9th. Yeah, yesterday morning, you dropped Latavius Murray to sign oh, no. Tony I, I, I Jones put the, Jr. I put the waiver claim in you know, the, the, the night day before. before yesterday when Latavius didn't have a team and you paid seven dollars and what's funny is i oh, no. wait i waited when i draft look we can we can roll the tape when i drafted <laughs> latavius I'm not murray, to throw, I, I, I literally you said you did when i drafted latavius murray in our league of record draft i said i am drafting a guy who's about to get cut because he's going to be a baltimore raven but then when he cleared waivers but and then, they signed lev bell i started to think maybe they weren't going to sign latavius and the waivers went through before that news came so yes i I unfortunately uh, You're made not that a transaction. Man of, not a man of courage, I understand. I'm a man I'm of sure very exactly. little patience. Yeah. It, well, that's hard. It was a hard situation. Um, but, but my point is, Tony Tony James Tony, jo <laughs> Tony Jones Jr. Uh, Tony Tony Brooks James Jones Why Jr. Why is it Tony it's, Tony? I like the Tony, double Tony. Tony Tony. Uh, what, like the band? Yeah, for I, sure. I like that. Tony Tony Brooks James Jr. Isn't the, James is, Jones Jr. James Jones Jr. Jr. So, um, isn't, the, isn't the group Tony Tony Tony? Yes. Okay, but right. uh, here's the thing: he's someone to keep your eyes on to see because the utilization, utilization, um, and juice first string, not just in preseason. Does he look as good in real NFL action against a, a good defense? Uh, I'll have my eyes on him a lot. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you're hoping that uh, that drop works out for you too. Oh, so that's true. I, um, it's, it's, <clears throat> for me, it's personal. Aaron Jones, yes. Aaron Rodgers, yep. Yeah. Devontae Adams, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Robert Tunyon, yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's do it. Five for fifty and a touchdown against New Orleans last year for him. I'm watching to see where Aaron Rodgers throws the football outside of Devontae Adams this year. He has options that he, you know, he didn't have Randall Cobb last year, but it's really hard to project Cobb to have a significant fantasy value. He may have a more real, a better real life value for Aaron Rodgers. But you look back, I wanted to make Randall Cobb my undrafted gem. On that show, I had written him in. Then I went back and I just, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see the pathway to consistency there. Although he did have like 868 yards in Dallas. I think people forget that. He actually yep. contributed there. But I think he's going to help Rodgers out. Yep. What do you do? Any interest in A.J. Dillon in this first week? Not not in the first week with this matchup. I, yeah, terrible matchup the, for runners. Yeah, the Saints were number one against running back last year. And so I, I'm fine with Aaron Jones because of the pass catching work. I'm going to hold off on A.J. Dillon, watch what happens there. So, yeah, wa watching the secondary receiving options and watching A.J. Dillon on the Green Bay and side. And specifically, I'm watching uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling be because the training camp reports on him, like you couldn't get away from a positive report on MVS. And it's possible that that is Randall Cobb that's helping open things up. You know what I mean? Like Maybe, yeah. Have, have a veteran who knows how to get to where the scheme is supposed to open up the deep threat. All right, let's go to the Broncos Giants matchup here in New York. DraftKings Sportsbook Whoa, line. Oh man. Broncos minus three. Over under is forty two. <laughs> the Giants are implied under twenty points. At home. Implied under twenty points at home. The, oh. le the single least efficient passing game uh in the league last year. Now, 
I had the the just uh, incredible privilege yesterday of manually adding every single person in a dynasty league back to the roster one by one. Mm-hmm. Good work. Um, which gave me just a true, uh, I don't know what, two hours of appreciation for all of these rosters and the teams. And one player I noticed on your roster, Mike, you are privileged with the Daniel Jones. Oh experience. yeah. So, um, well, because I got to pair him with Drew Locke. Yeah, what a w- wonderful combination <laughs> that is, Vic. Dude, Fangio, but they would be awesome on a golf course. They would have a blast. Oh, they would bro down. They would bro down for <laughs> Those sure. Those are a couple of backwards caps <laughs> and a lot of drinks on that. Yeah, golf that beer course. cart is empty. Oh, and the, I mean the plaid pants, the loudest golf plaid pants you've ever seen. Now, to be clear, the ball would land nowhere near the hole for uh, on sure. any no accuracy. Source. Uh, Vic Fangio, Joe Judge, a real man's man's matchup. They probably both are swapping stories on wind sprints that they've had their team do. But Mike brought it up yesterday, and I think the, it's reflected here in the over-under. The defense for the Giants was actually really good last year or yep. showed signs of, you know, they had some games, you know, fifth against fantasy quarterbacks, 11th against wide receivers, 11th against tight ends. They did give it up on the ground a little bit. so Their offense lets them down. I'm interested in, and because of this, right? They are home underdogs to Denver. I'm interested in both Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams in this game. Williams in a, a flex if you don't have something better. Definitely in a DFS environment. But you know, this this might be a nice week one for Melvin Gordon. It I, could jo- be. I joked about him being a top ten back in week one uh, because that's how fantasy works. But do you agree with that? I, I do agree with that. I think Melvin Gordon will come out, and especially week one will be the uh, more clear starter of the two of them. I think both will be involved. I would prefer to not start Javante uh, week one, and I'm fine flexing Melvin Gordon week one. I, I do think that that will shift and change by the end of the year, uh, but they are favored, uh, and that helps Melvin Gordon. That helps the running game. I, I think Denver I, I think Denver handles this game pretty easily. Well, uh, maybe this is why they made a quarterback change. They were 30th in first downs last year, 31st in completion percentage. Um, Teddy B taking over. Sutton, Judy, what are we doing with the wide receiver starts uh, in this game? Is is Judy a player you'd play over Sutton? Yes, I would I would play Judy over Sutton. What about Sutton. over LaVisca Chenault? Judy or Chenault against Houston? I, uh, I'd play judy i would as well what about judy or debo against detroit mike debo <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah. a fair it's a fair uh judy point. or claypool against buffalo Ooh, I claypool I, i'm playing judy in that one i think i'd play claypool there serling shepherd uh kenny galladay are they in your lineup nope preferably not so to be clear which of the uh which of I'd, the Kenny G's I don't know, are we expecting? I don't know if the saxophone is tuned up and ready to play yet. I. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, Kenny G. Are we expecting more of this this week? Yeah, I don't. I, I was, give not, him, not give him some time. It's it's Even though we've heard it, it's it's fresh it's every time. It's still real bad. Yeah. But give him some time. <laughs> Missed most of training camp, still limited. Kenny Galladay's, his ADP, you know, if you. It dropped. So. If you have Kenny Galladay on one of your teams, hopefully you have a better starting option. Maybe you don't. If Noah Fant was drafted to be your tight end, are you pivoting because of the injury news, or are you just playing him? You probably are having to play him. I say that as a Mike Kosicki owner who, uh, you know, it was like there's just no one I love on the waiver wire. Gronk was the option Gronk, who was Gronk, available Gronk, Gronk. Uh, in, in plenty of leagues, but uh, that option is no longer available. Yeah, this is not an exciting game. The I'm, Giants games hit the under 80% of the time last year. Saquon Barkley, is that a grin and bear it because of where you drafted him? 100%. All right, uh, let's move on. Bears, Rams. Um, let's go here. Uh, Rams minus eight. That's the DraftKings Sportsbook line. Under 40, uh, under forty Over under is 46 and a half. That puts the Rams at 27 points. The Bears at 19. Two new quarterbacks for both of these franchises. Yes. Uh, Matthew Stafford at home. Now, okay, let, let me ask you this. Do you do anything? I mean, you have to play Montgomery and Robinson despite the matchup. Am I right? Correct. That's it, though, right? On the on the Bears' side, no decisions. I mean, like Mooney, now with the back injury, I'm not playing him on the road. 
against the number one passing defense in football. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's it. There, I don't even know that there's anything to watch for here because of the Rams' defense. The The Bears are the easiest decision. It's, it's David Montgomery, Allen yeah. Robinson, log off. Last year when Montgomery played the Rams, if you want to get an idea of expectations, you're probably hoping for 10 points because he was at 19 for 69, five receptions for nine, uh, five better, receptions, nine points. Yeah, better hope he gets those five receptions. Or a touchdown. Yeah. He's going to get all the work, so there's that. But it's it could be a Zeke-esque type of game for him. We'll see what Andy Dalton can do. Stafford, Daryl Henderson, Woods and Cup, Higby, start them all at home. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Tight end was a position the Bears struggled immensely against, hence – uh, the Higby start of the week, which I think was Mike's start. It of the was, week. it was. I don't know why someone's trying to credit you with my incredible no. start of the no, week. No, it's because he's my, uh, my you're guy. my guy. My, yes. my guy. Yeah. All right, the Monday Night Football matchup: the Baltimore Ravens. We've talked a lot about the backfield there against the Las Vegas Raiders. The line from DraftKings: Ravens minus three and a half. Over under is fifty points. Maybe our primetime games are exciting in Week One. I think this could be a, a pretty good game, actually. Uh, the Vegas uh, Raiders, their games hit the over 13 of 16 times. That was number one oh. last year. So I had a 50-point over-under with them hitting the over a lot last year. Maybe we get some exciting performances from, I don't know, what, Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards? Oh, man, that would be sweet. I just want one of them be to be fun. relevant. Yes. It would be a lot of fun to have one of them truly break out this year. I am hopeful. I am not optimistic. Um, I, let me ask you a question, Andy. You've you've always uh, been good on the on the lines. Were you surprised at how close um, the line is between the Ravens and the Raiders? No. Okay. No, because this is game one, Las Vegas at home, um, five hundred team last year. I yeah, I mean three and a half is is given. The Ravens quite a bit on the road here, I think. So I, I, I imagine it's going to be a very close game. I don't think the Ravens are going to be able to, uh, you know, the Raiders, no Marcus Peters now, a backfield where we're, it's ambiguous for Baltimore, injuries at the wide receiver uh, core where, okay, yeah, we get Sammy Watkins, we get Hollywood. I don't know. I think it'll be a pretty close game myself. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean I'm playing a bunch of Raiders. I'm not excited about that. Um uh, I'm not playing Derek Carr. I'm not. I'm watching Rugs and Edwards. I'm not playing them. Darren, Darren about, Waller and Josh Jacobs are the the starts. Are you worried about Josh Jacobs with the with the toe injury, the running back signings? Do you do you have hesitation where you're willing to I look do. to like a Melvin Gordon? Or I would play you? Gordon over Jacobs okay. this week. Yeah, That's what I, based on the matchup. But I would. I imagine most people are going to need to flex Jacobs based on what options they have. Um. Uh, he fell really late in drafts. I mean, I, you know, sometimes if you were like going zero RB, he could have been your first running back. But otherwise, there's a chance that you have the luxury. I think with Josh Jacobs to to sit him for a week. Yeah, you might need to do it just because of the time. I mean, you have a Monday night game, so if you have any question mark about the injury heading into the weekend, what's the practice report today? That's going to matter. Yes, because you, unless you can pivot to now, if you have Kenyon Drake for some reason. Wait till Monday, and it, or you know. tie, or you grab Tyson, right? And no, okay. Let's say heads up. Would you prefer Williams or Jacobs? Jacobs. I would play Williams. Okay. That is uh, a Monday night decision. None of us saw coming. Yeah. <laughs> a week ago, Lamar. Though you always play Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews. Yes. He's in your lineup. So, yes. is there a flyer you'd take at wide receiver for the Ravens this week? Well, I mean, come on now. Week one wonder. <laughs> you know, it's week one. I mean, it's cold-blooded. I mean, the amazing. Lizard King. It's incredible. The Ravens wide receivers had 100, 137 Watkins. receptions combined. As now, say say as, that again. Say that one more time. The Ravens wide receivers last year for the entire season combined for 137 receptions. That's, Doesn't Julio Jones have like a 130-plus reception teams, year? These two teams ignore their wide receivers more than anybody else. The the rave the Raiders wide receivers saw it forty six percent of the time target wise yeah which was the lowest like the Ravens just have a small pie the Raiders threw the ball a lot more and still lowest target share to wide receivers and I don't know if it changes so going to be interesting no news updates Brooksy 
No, sir. All right, head over to jointhefoot.com. The Injury Blitz podcast debuts today. That's with Matthew Betts, our injury expert. He's going to keep you up to speed on – and he'll have the, the Friday practice reports for at least some of these guys, right? Yeah, you, I think he waits to record until after yeah, that. Yeah, so you can get that over at jointhefoot.com. Game day alerts as well. I'm so excited about this segment. Yes. Yeah. Let's get it going. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. This is going to be so much fun. Every Friday, we've got the Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. Andy versus Jason versus Mike. And we've got some things on the line here. First of all, this is the first year we've ever been able to actually play paid DFS. Arizona recently regulated DFS and sports betting. We are going head to head to head every single week. We are very competitive. Money is on the line. Yep. Pride is on the line because we're going to keep track of first, second, and third place finishes. And perhaps and most importantly, <laughs> shame is on the line because the loser last place <laughs> every single week is going to do something that only we would do. They're going to spin the wheel of hats. They're going to l wear something ridiculous for this segment every week. It plays so well for an audio podcast Look, to have people wear a, a subscribe stupid on YouTube. hat. Yeah, go check out the YouTube, and it's it's really more for us to stare you, yeah. stare you in the eyes. I as want you, wear you to like look a, like an idiot. You're wearing a uh, the the whirly copter hat or yeah. something like that, or a chicken a, mask, or an oversized cowboy <laughs> hat, or Jason stretching on a chicken mask. It's going to be fun. Or um, a fedora, or a fedora, which <laughs> oh no, again that will be a stretch as Thank well. Goodness well, that the, I will never lose. The the best part of, of this punishment, Jason, is at least you're a hat guy. Right. Yes. I'm your head. Your your <laughs> always look real good in hats. Um. So here we go. We're gonna go through our lineups. We did not reveal these to one another until just now. We've all lined up our week one uh, DFS lineups. Let's start at the quarterback position. I'm going Ryan Tannehill for sixty five hundred bucks at home against Arizona. I don't blame you. I am in love with uh, Tannehill this week. He was the first one in my lineup, but I ended up. Pivoting to Jalen Hurts, the matchup in Atlanta is juicy, and I see someone else did as well. Well, yeah. it's sixty four hundred. Yeah, it's sixty four hundred, and we both went with Jalen Hurts because we wanted it in on that uh, that particular matchup. So much so that we both went with the stack of Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith. The the value you can get on these rookies right now when you're playing over at DraftKings, Devontae Smith forty five hundred. So I. I Saving some cash there for what I project to be their number one target. So Hertz was 6,400, 100 less than Tannehill. At running backs, I'm going Dalvin Cook, Raheem Mostert. Cook is at 9,100, Mostert at 5,800. Mostert taking on Detroit, Cook against Cincinnati. I wanted a powerhouse running back. Cook's the one I went with with the matchup against Cincinnati. Jason, your two running backs are? My two running backs are Tyson Williams. Yeah, you're taking that kind of, it's it's not a completely free square cuz he's 4500. Yeah, and and when I built this lineup it was prior to Latavius Murray, so I don't expect a huge game, but it allowed me to get Christian McCaffrey full PPR. I think as the season goes on, he's going to be in the 10,000 plus range. Yes. Right now he's 9500, very very expensive, but um I think still a value yeah and I've, I found some value at the bottom of my roster so I was able to get Christian McCaffrey in as well and part of that value was Raheem Mostert I'm with Andy that Mostert at 5,800 for what he could do in that matchup against Detroit it's very fine value all right my wide receivers were Julio Jones DJ Moore and Devonta Smith you're in on the Smith train Julio Jones and Ryan Tannehill I have that stack there Julio was 6,800 more 6,100, and Devonta Smith's too, too cheap. I almost went with Jerry Judy here, very okay. similarly priced. I think he's 100 more than Devonta Smith, but I went with Smith just not wanting to. I also have Devonta Williams in my lineup, so I didn't want to have a couple of Broncos in a low over-under. Yep, my wide receivers, I went Keenan Allen for the PPR with potentially not having Austin Eckler, Devonte Smith, we all have him, and then Cooper Cup. Yeah, I like that. Um, he was pretty. Uh, I, I think his his price is is low, fifty five hundred, um, and he has the opportunity. <laughs> oh. Thank you. <sighs> Almost missed it. We should force a fifty five hundred player into every, a lineup every week. 
<laughs> that should be required. Mike, who's your wideout? So as as mentioned, I have Devontae Smith. And like Jason, I went with Keenan Allen of the, the upside of, of if Austin Eckler is limited, possibly out. Point. Yeah, you're point. gonna be screaming point a lot. And then I got in on the uh the Atlanta matchup yet again because I have Calvin Ridley at seventy nine hundred, which is a screaming value to me. A guy who can finish as the number one wide receiver <clears throat> on the week. Tight end, I went with uh, this year's Logan Thomas, uh, which is Logan Thomas, for 4,600 against the Chargers. Jason, Kyle Pitts. I went with Kyle Pitts because the week one matchup. Of course week, you did. I mean, <laughs> week one against Philadelphia, he should be very involved. He's only 4,400. I think his price goes much, much higher after this week. Well, this, Mike took a took a cheap uh, player yes, at this tight is, end. This is where I found my value, but I just want to point out that – Come Monday, Kyle Pitts is going to be coming off a sensational uh, rookie opening game, and Jason will he will hide behind him, using him in this fantasy face-off and say, "Look, I like Kyle Pitts," even though he disparaged him Can the entire offseason. Do his voice again for me. I love Kyle Pitts. Never, oh. never forget Foot Clan. This man hates him. Uh, Tyler <laughs> but, Conklin, but, Mike, but, for twenty nine hundred. Conk. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> We got a conk drop? Yeah, we did. Uh, I think yeah. that's the goose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not, that works. I it, like it. It works for 2900 That works for me, too. That we're, I'm just hoping that the, my tight end can pull in two two receptions at a touchdown. At flex, I went Javonta Williams for 4000 the opportunity against the Giants. We'll see what happens there. It was a discount uh, flex for me. Kareem Hunt is Jason's for 5500 Oh, he Start got Start of the week. Another one. <laughs> And then Elijah Moore, Mike, you went with uh, the three thousand, the absolute low dollar rookie. Yep, and with with uh, Jameson Crowder missing time, I'm not expecting huge things from Elijah Moore, but he could surprise. Your Conklin and Moore allowed you to go McCaffrey, Mostert, Ridley, which yes. I just I, I'm a little jealous. I went with the Colts on defense. This is where I got my bargain Ooh. priced defense. It's only twenty three hundred, one of the cheapest on DraftKings. But still a great defense. Like, the Colts are a good defense at yes, home. Yes, they are. And so, new offensive coordinator, maybe they can slow Russ down enough to get some value here. Sure. I was surprised by the Ravens uh, Raiders line. I am as, surprised looking at it right now. And uh, so, I took the Ravens, only 2,700, a great defense. And I got the Minnesota Vikings at 3K against the Cincinnati Bengals. Let's see if uh, Joe Burrow's actually ready to play. There's a lot on the line, guys. We got, yes. we got some cash, some shame, and some pride. Um, which is how we do fantasy. I mean, those right. three things. No, uh, download the DraftKings app right now. Use the code Ballers, and get this: new customers can get a free shot at a million dollars in total prizes. That's the code Ballers at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. And stay tuned. Yes, we're going to be doing this segment every week. And we've got a listener league happening over at DraftKings. We do. And this week it is going to be a free entry. So go follow our socials and we'll we'll get that tweeted out as soon as it's ready. Absolutely. And this is a good time to remind you also to, if you are a big-time DFS player, tune in to our Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast mm -hmm. with Kyle Borgignoni, Matthew Betts. These guys are doing two shows a week specific to DFS with picks. You've also got our DFS pass which you can check out on the website. So if you love mixing in some DFS with your redraft, with your dynasty leagues, we've got you covered. You can check out the DFS pass over on the website as well. That's going to do it Woo! as we head into week one Sunday live, one hour before Sunday kickoff at ballerslive.com. You'll catch Mike breaking it down for week one. I'll see you then, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.